Good evening and welcome to Livid Comic Slayer. Tonight's guest is a movie producer, movie director. He's made such films as My Pure Joy, Hate Crime, and To Jennifer. His latest film coming out is going to be called Survive the Game with Bruce Willis, and that's due to come out on October 8th. So please welcome our friend, Mr. James Cullen Resick. What's up, everybody? Long time no see. Yeah, yeah. How you doing? <laughs> Long time. <laughs> been literally less than a day since we've been on together. So. <laughs> here we are. Yeah. So people, if they're wondering um, where James is, uh, he'll be here in a, in a few moments. He's just uh, taking care of a few things and he's going to hop on. So we just wanted to take this time to just talk and uh, maybe give you some updates on what we're doing. So we can certainly do that. So welcome back, Rosario. Uh, hope your internet's uh, rehab since yesterday. So. <laughs> yeah, it's going, it's going, going good now. Yeah. Awesome. Right. Perfect. No, go. no thunderstorms in, in New Hampshire, so we should be good to go tonight. Um, but yeah. Um, you, you, you know what I was thinking uh, as a strategy for us? Like uh, we could just announce that we, we are having Frankie Miller tonight. And then he, he doesn't oh, just don't have him. <laughs> we, yeah, we keep going. <laughs> Dude, there was this band that we used to play with. Uh, they would just always say that they were going to play this uh, the shows, right? And they would never show up, but their singer would come and he'd have like boxes and boxes of merchandise for his band but the band would never actually play and i was like this is probably a brilliant <laughs> move you know like he would he would just show up and like take over a table there and just sell their merch because everyone's hoping the band's gonna come and like well hell i'll grab a cd and a shirt while i'm here for that band and then they would never play the show so might be something to yeah. that it could be a power move <laughs> this, this, this is the, the fake news era so we have to adapt to it so let's well. make some money out of it I like to deliver on my promises, though. That's the yeah. thing. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah I so promise. do I. But, but you know, like I, I can't sell my soul at any time. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's got a price. Ted yeah. Miller over where, here. Where, where is the highest bidder? I'm there. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, yeah. I promise James is really coming on. Um, we we were all lucky enough to get to watch the movie in advance before its release. It comes out in a couple of weeks. So, um Lionsgate was yeah. nice enough to you, let us you know, check it out. To, talking about deals, like, uh, would you go through a little bit uh, uh, about that ball? Like, uh, people don't know that, that project yet, and I, I'm I'm on the last panel, and maybe this is a, an opportunity just to give give them a teaser of yeah. what they, they can expect from from that ball. Yeah, it's a I'm dark here, background. Yeah, it's a dark, dark story. That's for sure. Um, you're gonna feel sympathy for the the main guy as you see him screaming there, Ted Miller. Um, but for anyone that doesn't know what it's about, you know, I know a lot of people are excited about the art, but um, outside of like a couple posts, I really haven't said much about the story of it. But it takes place in the early 1900s uh, during the Dead Ball era, which is where the name comes from, and it follows Ted Miller. Um, he has his career cut short due to an injury from a dirty play during a baseball game. And he's desperate. His wife's pregnant. He owes the mob money. Um, he can't play anymore. He's about to sign one of the biggest contracts in league history. And here he is and can't even play baseball anymore. So he, you know, ends up um, meeting this evil magician um, that runs the carnival that's in town. And basically makes a deal with the devil situation right so he um the magician named uh, alexander neville offers to heal the injury for a future return favor and ted is so desperate that he agrees upon it without even knowing what that return favor is and years later they come back uh, they want that return favor and once he finds out what it is he doesn't want to um doesn't want to agree to it and it leads to a lot of bad things happening and it's, you know, the way I was explaining it at the con is it's uh, like a horror thriller slash revenge story, um, really, is, is how I view it. So, um, 
it's you're in for a wild ride. It's definitely yeah. not kid friendly like you will. Um, yeah, by any means. I've been advertising the art as being very, you know, art noir kind of feel, and I love it because it almost has like a clip art kind of feel, which kind of coincides with that era. And I say this in a in a good complimentary way, but it feels like that 1910s you know, jive to it. Like, I think the art is perfect for the story arc. And um, I just started going through and coloring it. And I'm just doing uh, mainly like some uh, watercolor type staining application, which is different than what I would normally do for some of our books. But I wanted to have that period correct look to it, like it's an old worn out, uh, I guess, like a piece of newspaper or something or a four color print from back in the day. So that's been fun and challenging to kind of do that. But it's definitely a cool look. And uh, boy, man, people you know, really love in the art of that and um, they're all on board and we've had some people already uh, wanting us to send them some uh, distribution and wholesale stuff on that so the response even not even out yet has been tremendous so um, should be a very exciting things coming up here for Deadball I think in the next month or two we'll have the thing rolling out to people so it should be pretty awesome I think it'll yeah. be ready to be off to the printer at some point in October like I don't know it feels like because of the color style that you, you you can go through it fairly quick um yeah it's compared to of, yeah just big blocks of just swashing right over it just you know wash 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 and it goes very very fast because it's not i i really don't want it to be tight and technical because that you know it, one of the things is back in when they were printing stuff they didn't always have the registration perfect on those offset press back in the day and then two if it is something that's 100 years old well it might have been exposed to the elements like water and things and maybe that you know, mess up the pages over the time. So yeah, it's, it should be a lot faster, but I, I hope it's something original, uh, you know, and compliments Rosario's heart when I go in and do the color. So that's always the big thing too, is make sure they both work in harmony together. I don't want to take away his penmanship on there also. No, it, 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 it is working, it is working. Definitely. So far, so good, yeah. We haven't shown yeah. it to anyone yet, but I'm, I'm very, I'm very happy with that. And there's another thing that I should add is that the way the story is written, it's like you can have your own interpretation. Like you can either think that it's a devil, it's the actual, you know, entity, or you can just take that that man as a as a con man, or whatever. Because like it's not implied that there's anything supernatural there. It, that yeah. could be really a, a real story because we are surrounded by by those kind of people and people who are willing to believe. And the thing is, we are focusing on the drama and, and the, the, the action that comes with it. And when, when, when John sent me the story, I read that and I said, all right, like I can think that's the devil, but actually there's nothing here that can really uh, state that. So it's up to the reader, you know, to, to, to yeah. come into his own conclusions, which I think is great because like a, a story can be as big as you can understand understand it. And that ball gives you the chance to be a, a co-author of the story because you can make your own at the end yeah. of it. So I guess, because I only read the first script. <laughs> Don't know uh, yet. Well, you have script. Uh, Rogerio, just so anyone knows, Rogerio has script too in his hand at this moment. Well, digitally in his hand yeah. <laughs> on his computer. Um, so it's done. It's ready to go. Um, Yule 2 is and, and, moving and, along. And, and there's something really nice about Dead Ball is, is, is that I don't, I haven't, I haven't heard of any artist that works as I am doing now. Like I, I go page by page without knowing what comes next. Yeah. Because I want to have the reader experience. And that's what I do. That, that's what I you guys, do. You guys kill me with that, though, because I'm like, I, I want, like, feedback on the on the story. And it's like, <laughs> no, I, I'm, I'm reading as I go. And I'm like, ah! Um, it's the motivation but, to get it done. Yeah, you, know, that's, that's <laughs> yeah you, you got them. You got the feedback as they come. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing. I guess the fact that, like, well, because if you drew something in an early page that, like, you didn't know later on in the book because you hadn't read that far ahead that you needed to go back and adjust, at least when it's digital, you, you can tweak it fairly easy hopefully um and actually in book one it never was an issue really you didn't have to go back and switch something for continuity purposes like yeah it worked so uh, I, 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 that, I, 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 um, uh, I was gonna say when you do that stippled um 
background effect. Is that a brush that you're doing with that with? Or are you manually creating that like stippled effect? Um, uh, I don't know if it's on that page. I think it was on like the, yeah, yeah, yeah. the interior I, I shots guess, of the house. I yeah, guess like, kind of like down here, or down yeah, towards yeah. that black section. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm, uh, Are you there there manually a, putting the little dots in, or is that a, a brush? Uh, no, 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 no. That, there's, there's a brush effect to that. And the way you make the, the, the way that you can make it uh, look natural is that you, you mix a few brushes together and you go between black and white and you just do the contrast. You know, sometimes I accomplish a nice effect, sometimes I do not. Uh, because it, it, it is a learning uh, process. Uh, such as this one here, like, you know, those points, like, I, I can't do that physically, you know, point by yep. point. So I, I have a brush for this. But a, I want people, I, I want people to, to, yeah, I want people to feel that it's like a, it's manually, you know, <laughs> done there. But it, it is not, it is not. Like, there's a filter for it. Because the, so you, you know, Rogerio, that with a lot of your deep questions to our guests, where you say you don't have to answer this, if you if you want if you were trying to <laughs> keep an artist secret, you didn't have to answer it. Yeah, <laughs> I don't mind. I don't mind at all. I have no secrets. <laughs> uh, but sometimes I do like to to put people in. How would I say that? And in, 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 in corners, I like sometimes to corner people because I like to feel. Uh, it, 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 it's something that I, I get from from fighting and from doing martial arts. It's like sometimes you pretend that you're strong and you're not. You know you're gonna lose it. You, you know you're gonna lose the fight, but you never pretend that you're going to lose. Like you go there <laughs> to win. And when you approach people like that, you you you, you get uh, I'd say something that they would not produce under normal circumstances. And you, have, you give them the chance to escape, but people do never, do never want to, to, to get away. They want to face you when you give the opportunity to be courageous. And when you ask, when you ask hard questions, it, it, it is good, but that, could be, that, that could, can turn out to be really, uh, I'd say, embarrassing sometimes because you never know <laughs> how deep is your question or how idiot you are at, at the time. So you have to use common sense which is very hard because you don't know like what is common sense you don't know because that varies uh like I, i'm in brazil I, th there are some questions that i could ask to brazilian people and i've never asked to uh, an american for example and vice vice versa you know that's the way it is so finding the balance is a challenge so uh, uh be, being a conversationalist is very it is is a skill that takes years to not to perfect because you never get perfect at that but you, you learn a few, a few tricks you know and I, i'm learning uh, during the process of doing the, this uh podcast with, with you guys because sometimes uh i feel that we are we are getting to know people for what they are and not for what they play to be because we are always playing roles all the time you know, even here, I'm playing a role now. I think that's a good segue. Um, yeah, James is uh, he's hanging out in the waiting room. He's joining us. So we're going to go ahead and bring him on. So uh, Yeah, yeah. Let's welcome yeah. the man. Let's get him on here. Let's do this thing. Yeah. Here he is. So I am here, but I can't hear you guys for some reason. Oh, no. That happens uh, sometimes with uh, the settings on the computer. You might have to jump on to another I'm, device. I'm, or I'm so. using my, my iPhone, but I, for some reason I can't hear you guys. It's it's all like very, very quiet. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I can hear like sure. very faintly, like as if you guys were whispering. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are. Um, no. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's our move. That's how we mess with people when they come uh, up. <laughs> I'll just like listen real close. Like I'll, I'll be like, ah. I'll, oh, yeah, man. <laughs> Oh, well, that sucks. Um, I don't I mean, know. Maybe what... I'll try putting on like my 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 my. Ears. Yeah, yeah. Maybe that'll help. Like I'll do like the little ear things, and maybe I can make that work. <laughs> yeah, that, that would be a good move. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe that'll help me out. Um, crap. No worries. Uh, is it possible to uh, to call back in or? Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah All right. sure. All right. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah, do it up. Cool. Well, yeah, just the perils of live stream, right? So we deal with uh, stuff from time to time. So, yeah. 
There you go. Yeah. Hey, Brian's, uh, Brian Silverback's our cover artist for Dead Balls, wondering what the heck this is all about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Brian. What's up, Brian? Yeah, yeah. we uh, we're lucky enough to to get uh, James on the show. He's a director, and uh, actually, I bet Brian's asked, Brian does some acting. He's he's done uh, some some acting. Uh, at least what I've seen on Facebook there. So maybe this is piquing his interest. But uh, uh, we're we're excited to talk to him. We got a chance to screen his new movie coming out in October with Bruce Willis in it, and uh, get the chance to talk to him. But yeah, it was fun. I like that. It was fun to sell. I like the setting. We were talking about that too, like where it was filmed. <laughs> I knew you'd like the setting at the farm. Yes, I do. Yeah, you're like <laughs> this is me. This yeah. is me at the farm right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, All right, let's see. All right, let's have him hop back in. It's here. better now. How's you can? You good? So oh, no. Nothing going on? Nothing. Got nothing. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you can make a film with an iPhone and you cannot do this. <laughs> no. Um, I'm trying to think of any other way to... Um... Might have to switch device too. I think uh, we had Nick had that problem. He had to go to a different device yeah, or something. I remember. Uh, probably, we... yeah. Well, if he's only got his phone, might not be able to. Um, not, now know... we can hear him. Yeah, we're not saying anything. Well, now I'm saying something. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, we haven't run into this before, so I don't really know what else to do. Um, Yeah, we can just uh, come back on again. I'm not sure. Live stream technical difficulties. Uh huh. J can you uh, can you hear us, James? I think he's frozen now. So I think it's yeah, he's frozen. He's frozen. frozen. There he goes. He's gonna try to yeah. come out, come back on. I think. Yeah. Sorry, guys. That's what we happens happens with live stream. That's okay, though. So. <laughs> that is all right. right? Yeah, we, we were yeah. advertising. We're Red all over Bowl. the world, so I mean that's okay. something you know people got to think about. Is you know uh, yeah. he's out in California, we're in New Hampshire, and you're in Brazil. So I mean it's amazing that it's this clear. Yeah. You imagine a well, short well, time well, ago, where's James there was at? a delay. Right? Remember talking on the phone internationally, and there'd be like a delay. You have to wait for somebody to say something. Remember that? Yeah. 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 I remember my uh, yeah. my ex wife lived in China for like a year. I remember I had to buy like the prepaid calling cards and call over there, right? And then like the minutes would run out. <laughs> it would warn you on your card. Remember those? It was back in the day. Yeah. All right. All right. Here's what we're doing. He just called me. Um, okay. So he's gonna he's booting up his computer. Um, okay. So I'm gonna email him the link real yeah, no quick. Worries. Yeah. No. Okay, cool. Yeah. 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 Um, it happens. No big deal. I gotta find his email though i had it there we go yeah we were just talking about i don't know if you listened to it, about like back in the day how like even things like this would be a dream to have this capability for three oh, of sure. us could talk in real time you know yeah. just a short time ago that's come a long way but yeah there's technical things that happen so it's okay it's usually us right so. yeah there we go i just sent it to him okay yeah no problem yeah, so you're watching... I got that page colored, so I got it colored page one. That's for behind Ruggiero. There, we did that. So that's in the that's in the can, man. That thing's ready to go. So it was cool. Yep. That's yeah, yeah. The, all those bands you went through the through those, yeah. Yeah. There's more of that <laughs> stippling effect that I was talking about on the wall of the uh, them coming in the house, right? So you have that effect there too. Yeah, man. Uh, we we're honored to have that on our banner. Um, People were digging that at the con too. They like, what's this all about? And they, <laughs> there's a couple kids too. They're like, oh, yeah, baseball. So and I'm like, ah, yeah, you might not want to read that one. <laughs> yeah, kids are coming up. Like, oh, it's a baseball story. I'm like, yeah, kind of. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Brian, Brian, that that's a really great, great cover. You know, I love that. First time I saw it, I fell in love with it because that's that's the feeling, and you got that. You know right in the middle of the target oh man i started following him um when we 
started working on Yule, um, just trying to network with comic people. And I came across Brian uh, because he had a lot of similar friends in common or whatever. And seeing all his his covers he does, I'm like, oh, man, these are freaking awesome. <laughs> so um, I remember telling Joel, I was like, we got to use this guy um, if, if he th- would even have the time. I think what happened, the part of it, too, is I thought you would hire a different guy named Brian that I know. <laughs> and I was <laughs> yeah, like, you were. <laughs> oh, wow. I know you guys were, like, chatting. And you're like, oh, I'm going to uh, get Brian to do the cover. And I was like, oh, that's cool. Like, have you seen his work? And I'm sending you someone else's work entirely, right? I was like, like, this is him? No, 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 no. Uh, Yeah, I'm like, yeah, man, it's him. I had no idea that you're talking to Brian Sorbeck. I was like, you know, some other, it was Brian uh, Pinky. He does, like, uh, he skulls up, like, money and stuff. He draws on dollar bills and, you know, like, cut sheets of cash and stuff. And he does real cool stuff. And I thought that's what you were getting. I was like, okay, I don't know how you're going to tie in the money, but that's cool. Like, whatever, man. (laughs) So, it's funny. Yeah. I don't know, somewhere the, we lost it out of the text and things when we're chit-chatting with each other. So we lost it somewhere along the way. So I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, the book's been awesome uh, reception. Uh, we handed out a lot at the con to a lot of industry people, man. They were just all over it. They're like, we're getting emails this week. You know, hey, when can we pick this up? Are you guys doing any type of like wholesale distribution for shops and things? And like, hell yeah, man, we're on over that. So. Yeah, we got the guy, the guy that does the the newspaper out of New York, I think it is. Um, I believe. Yeah, he's like, as soon as you get this done, send send me a copy. I want to review it. I want to feature you guys, and we're like, yeah, this is awesome. Uh, yeah, that's very encouraging. Yeah. I don't think there's been anybody that's been like, "What is this? I don't get it." <laughs> you know, can you tell me more about it? Right? It's been pretty straight up, you know. Yeah. I, it was a gamble, you know, with a baseball book, starting it off with no baseball. Like, I I, I guess, you know, the, the thought was, like, I wanted to start it off with a bang. Like, I wanted people, obviously, to, to be like, what the hell's happening right now? Why is there, like, a wolf man and a freaking girl crawling backwards right now? <laughs> like, what is happening? Um, you know, but um, it's worked out, I, I think. Well, again, here I go spoiling stuff, but I just think the way it moves forward, you know, in, into the book as it goes, I think it just works perfect. And then how it comes back to end, I just think it's you get those three stages. So it's uh, it's really cool. And, you know, and I love the fact that all the carnies, the the sixes, they, they were real, you know, like you sent me yeah. the photo, you sent me the photograph of that woman and say, fuck. That <laughs> That couldn't be just made up. Hey, she really let's is see if he can hear us. Let's see. James yeah, is back. James let's back see. On. Yeah, he's back in the All right. room. So let's bring on. Now I can hear you. Awesome. Yay. There, you go. there we go. There we go. You know, we ah, had that problem last week, too. It was strange. We had a guy named Nicky White on, and he couldn't hear us on his uh, iPad, so he hopped on his phone, and it worked fine. So I don't know. It's like... Uh, yeah, it was weird. I was like, I kept going, I can't hear you guys. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And then when I put in the earbuds, it just was like, <laughs> 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 it's our metal band. <laughs> yeah, it was like, rah, 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 rah. Yeah. <laughs> well, now we can just say officially, thanks for coming on. We're, we're happy to have thanks you. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having yeah, me. Man. Sorry, for the, so, <laughs> sorry for the delay. No, no, no cool. worries, no worries at all. I, I know I reached out to you. Uh, I've been following you for quite a few years on, oh, you know, uh, started following you on Twitter. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I remember watching Bethany and like, and it's just cool, like, seeing the growth too. I mean, obviously, Thanks, you're man. still, yeah, uh, you're, I mean, you're still pretty young, right? I mean, you got a long future ahead of you, and the fact that you've <laughs> done what you've done already, and like. I was telling these guys like you can just see the steady growth as you're going. So um, I had a blast watching the movie. Um, it's so kind. That's so kind of you, man. Like I, I, I definitely appreciate people that have like you know followed my career for a long time, especially because like you know, it, I you know it's it's pretty cool. I started off making a movie for seven thousand dollars. I just did a movie starring Bruce Willis. So it's pretty cool like to see the the you know the progression and stuff like that. Um, you know, it's it's uh, and I'm, I've always been curious what it's like on the other side for like people watching the stuff to see that, you know, um, and, you know, I feel like, you know, if people that were with me in the beginning as like fans or, or that started watching my movies, seeing that growth, like I feel like we're growing together. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. It's exciting, you know. It's only been what ten, eleven years too. Like, does it feel like it's weird? It's, it's I've been a filmmaker for eleven years, and I'm twenty nine years old. It's like weird to be able to say that. Like, yeah. I've been directing feature films for eleven years. 
Like I thought like by the time I say I was like a 10 year veteran, I'd be close to retirement. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm 29, you know, and, uh, and, and uh, I feel like I'm just getting started. I feel like I just started making movies, <laughs> man. Man, the yeah, body yeah. of work that you put out is so it's almost prolific at this point. I mean, you look at your IMDb page, man, and there's like a hundred different projects. And I'm like, does this guy <laughs> sleep at all? Like, I don't. Can't you tell how tired I <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask, <laughs> like, how the heck are you turning out all of this work? Like, your day must be ballistic. Like, that's incredible. Yeah, so, I mean, like, I, I just left the mix on my movie, The Fortress. I was in the uh, mix all day today. So I left the mix, like the sound mix, uh, and then I did a, a an interview for Survive the Game, and then I'm on this interview with you guys. Then I have interviews starting at seven in the morning tomorrow. Then I'm back to the mix day. Then I have interviews starting at six p.m. So I'm just like, <laughs> it's just nonstop. Um, but you know, I, I would have it no other way. It's you know, I feel like you know, it's it's one of those things that like I, I've always felt like if I don't put my all into what I'm doing, like I can't expect people to like watch what I'm doing. You know, so I I try to put everything I have and all my time that I can into everything that I do. Um, <laughs> you know, because the the way I look at it, and I you know is is I have a responsibility not only to myself and the people involved in making the movie and like the actors that believed in me or the crew or the people financing it, but also to like the people watching it because like ultimately like, you know, I, I might have a limited budget or this or that, but like at the end of the day, like I know I have to put everything I can to make it as good as possible because they're still spending the same, you know, five ninety nine six ninety nine 99 to rent the thing as they are to rent a Marvel movie. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's like, you know, I need yeah. to push it and do as good as I can uh to be able to like compete as much as i can with it and maybe i won't be able to like fully compete you know i don't i don't think my movies are on that level but like i'm going to do everything i can to make you guys be entertained that's that's what i'm gonna uh, i'll yeah. put, put my my heart into it no matter what yeah, yeah. You, you, you know james like uh you, you a character which is very hard to interview because you have answered so many questions and most of the good questions are already asked <laughs> so uh, I, 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 I don't want you. To, yeah, I don't want you to think that this is an interview. This is more like a conversation. We should. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm just. Uh, it's all good. I, I, I listen. I figured it was more of a conversation. He's smoking a cigar, man. That's like. <laughs> yeah, man. That's <laughs> my chance, over there. I'm like, hey, where's my whiskey? <laughs> Let's pour me. Go for it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, nah, it doesn't be uh, here. You want to talk to other shows? Popcorn. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I like the gumball machine. Um, yeah, I gotta be doing gumball. something with my hands all the time, right? I'm one of those people, so like, <laughs> yeah. it just helps me focus. Actually, is part of that, so it helps That's keep good, me here. man. Yeah, yeah, it's part yeah, but, of that jam, and yeah, but it's my character. Saying right? that, <laughs> saying, saying that, I have, of, of course, I have a question in this guy's here. Like, uh, He's like, we're not going to yeah. ask you questions, but I have a question. Yeah, <laughs> I have a question. And, and this guy is, because I, I, I'm the guy that I give you the, the uh, opportunity or the chance to say just, oh, that is bullshit. I don't want to answer that. It's all right. And I'm flattered if you do that because that's going to make some extra views. I can just have a quote of it. And the thing is, you, 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 you are very young for us, of course. Oh God, that's a plane com coming up. Hey, I'm close to his age. You guys maybe feel that way, but yeah, you, you, yeah, hey, John, you, you're an older spirit. You are an older. <laughs> <laughs> his guy's 29. You know, like he, he comes across as a 50, 60 year old man because when I started listening to you, I was uh, drawing and listening to your uh, programs and interviews. I said. When, when I look at you, no, no, that's not that can't be the person because you have <laughs> so you have so, a deep knowledge about how the industry works. You know what works. You know what sells, which I admire a lot because you have the, the market uh, uh, intelligence that lacks in most of the artists, and you are also an artist. So, uh, how how did you learn uh, those skills together? Because like a when, you started off and started to learn a lot from your first first film, uh, which you, you said it, it was a failure. Uh, I, I'd say it was a failure for, for the market, but not for you, because it was a learning experience. Yeah, and I mean, from that on, like you just fuck, you skyrocketed. 
I mean, I would say like, you know, I, that's very kind of you. Um, I, I would say really what I've just been doing is I've been failing upwards. You know what I mean? Like I just feel, <laughs> I feel a little less each time. <laughs> so, so, you know, like I, you know, I learned, I learned from all the people I work with and, you know, I'm, I'm a firm believer that like a good director doesn't have to have the best ideas. They just have to recognize good ones. So like, you know, I surround myself with uh, very talented people and I listen to like, you know, the, the director might be the captain of the ship, but you're not going to ignore the, the crew that like might be the navigator of the, this, the, that on the ship. The person saying, Hey, there's an iceberg over there. Don't hit this iceberg you're not gonna go ah fuck it i'm gonna go hit that iceberg like you're like oh shit this guy's hit icebergs before i'm gonna avoid those icebergs but like you know i, I feel like i learned from my mistakes so like you know a lot of the problems i watched my movies the problems i had on my films when i was younger like they don't exist on my my earlier movies and even now i look for the flaws and the stuff that doesn't work and you know my dad used to call me and and read me my uh the my bad reviews uh, he would call me and read the bad reviews of my movies, and he would ask me uh, if there was any validity to what the people were saying, and I would be like, no, and he's like, no, no, if they're saying it, and more, more than one person is saying it, maybe you should listen, you know, like, uh, so, like, early on, like, I was like, man, like, the first few things I would do, I'd be like, if I shot it, it's going in the movie, I'm not deleting anything, and then, uh, you know, more so, I started to go, like, no, nah, I got to keep stuff i gotta i gotta trim it gotta make it like faster pace you know i started learning from my mistakes i think and 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 you know i think it's a learning thing and i've been blessed enough that people like i feel like i'm currently in film school right now you know what i mean like i didn't go to film school i feel like yeah. making movies has been my film school and i keep learning each time i do it so you know i just i'm just failing a little less each time <laughs> yeah. well you always you always hear like um they say it in in the art world too as far as like drawing doing comics that sort of thing is that um the best way to learn is to you know to jump right in and go for it you know so i mean and you're doing it on the big stage so um but uh, i was gonna say you know uh you were talking about making it faster paced doing this like survive the game that, that's a that's a fast-paced movie um you know a lot of action um it's pretty much non-stop from from minute one in that movie so um, yeah, I tried to make it really fun. Um, for me, like what I felt the movie needed to be was like, you know, I, I've talked about this a little bit, but I wanted the characters to talk like they were like, you know, in an Elmer Leonard book uh, or like an Elmer Leonard movie. And I was like, you know, and I want I want the, the, the film to feel kind of like Chad Michael Murray fell asleep. And then like he woke up suddenly and was like in the last action. Like, everybody around him is like a, a larger than life character that, and like, he's just like, what the fuck is going on? Like all these people are attacking him, coming after him, all this stuff. Everybody's like kooky and crazy. And like, everything's like larger than life. You got full on Bruce Willis there. Like, you know, like being like, you hit like a bitch, like all this stuff going on. That's like, you know, like just like cliched action stuff, but it was on purpose. And I feel like it's like, you know, I tried to make it fun and silly and action packed. And kind of like, you know, this larger than life thing of, you know, I hope people understand that when they see it. Like, it's, I, I don't think it's like something that needs to be taken seriously at all times. I think we played up the comedy a lot. And it's just about having fun watching this movie. Like, imagine if the character literally just woke up and suddenly was the main character of an action movie. And like, he doesn't realize it, but it's an actual action movie. Like, he got sucked into the screen. He's in this action movie. There's a brawl taking place in his living room. He's waking up. He's like, what yeah, he's the hell's like, going oh, on shit. here? What the fuck yeah. is that? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. Like, oh, shit. like, it's just a full on action movie. Like, it's just this madness going on. And, you know, yeah. we have all these really cool, like, all the cool music. Like, we had DMX tracks in there. We had stuff for, uh, you know, Junior Wells tracks in there. I thought, you know, we had some really cool, like, uh, stylistic music going on. And I, I think, um, and, and, like, the characters are just, you know, fun and silly and, and, larger than life and a lot of them are dressed in ways that might make you kind of think of other movies and that was on purpose uh yeah. so you know i tried to just make that that as fun as possible for people yeah i, I would say so that was one thing i i was thinking as i was watching the movie was it reminded me of watching action movies with my dad when i was a kid you know like the stuff i was yeah, seeing in the late 80s cool. early 90s type stuff yeah. uh, so that's exactly how i felt as i was watching the movie and that's what i was trying to have people feel like you know like i'm watching a movie like i, I grew up watching horror movies and action movies and stuff i like you know as a kid like i like the crazy violence the crazy action uh and i was just like you know let's just make something fun like, you know, a lot of these action movies try to be the same action movie over and over again, the same thing. Like, and I was like, look, if, if we're going to make something that's like this, like, let's try and have it be like 
fun, balls to the wall, have all this stuff go crazy. So we tried to do something that was like played into that hand and was like, you know, okay, let's like make an action movie for action fans, Easter eggs everywhere, fun, silly stuff. Let's have it be a fun time at the movies. Grab your popcorn. <laughs> Other way. <laughs> yeah. yeah well, uh, it's but, always backwards on the uh, yeah, on the on the yeah. Get a gumball machine. No, but I, <laughs> but I was yeah. just uh, get a cat. My cat over here has decided. <laughs> Cats are a hit, man. That's a good thing to put on the show. Yeah. People love it. So it's good. <laughs> but I'm like, you know, just have, try to have fun with it. So uh, I'm glad that that felt like that for you guys, because for me, that's what I was trying to do. Yeah, I love yeah. the uh, the setting for that. Where'd you guys film? Where on location was that? We filmed in Puerto Rico, Rico, man. We filmed in Puerto oh, nice. Rico, which was super That's cool. Awesome. I was I was blessed. Yeah. The Puerto Rican crew was great. Um, it was a little hot there, but like you know, a little humid for 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 me being an LA boy. Uh, <laughs> wasn't <laughs> the humidity, but uh, but it was a lot of fun, man. It was a lot of fun, and uh, and I think beautiful setting, beautiful setting. For sure, thank you, man. I, I think it was it was it was cool, and I think we got these great like landscapes. We're on the top of this giant mountain, like those those drone shots coming up to the 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 house. Like that's like those aren't stock. That's the real house. That's how separated it was. Oh wow! Everything. I was wondering if you built that's it. Crazy. I was like, did they build this prop house? Like how much of this? No, nah, no, that was set? real. That was real. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Was the interior on a set too, or was that also in that house? <laughs> Really, everything was filmed at that house. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah, that worked out yeah, great. Everything was filmed at that house. That barn was that barn. Like, all of that's that so was cool. on that wow. property. It was all, like, right next to each other. So we were just like, Well, if you ever need a New England farm, sir, I live on something similar. <laughs> <laughs> so if you ever want to come up here, you're welcome to. <laughs> You'd be surprised. I might end up calling you very quickly, being like, hey, yo, show me pictures of this farm. Yeah. Let's go. There you go. I made, There's nobody I made up the here joke. Matthew, it's awesome. So I'm out in the middle yeah, yeah. of nowhere. So it's perfect. I made the, <laughs> I made the joke yeah, yeah, to Joel when you were when, before you were on that he probably felt like he was watching himself because he lives out on a farm, you know, pretty much by himself <laughs> with his family. But, yeah, like he's probably thinking he's this action hero watching this movie right now but, yeah, that's, really, yeah, but that's really. good though because i tried to make an action movie of like look like all of us have had those dreams where we just like wake up and like we're in the dream and we're just like hey we're in uh, an action movie like it should be like that every man going into an action movie like trying to survive the day you know what i mean like i think yeah. it's like, i thought it, i thought it was i tried to make that fun and i hope people like i can't stress it enough i hope people understand that the movie was not trying to take itself seriously um, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think Mike uh, Mike Ciro did a great job in that too. As Frank, like he crushed. Oh, he's that fantastic. Role. Yeah, it was awesome. It was so good. Yeah, and he's a great foil yeah. for all the silliness that's going around around him, which I think, right? You know, because he's like yeah. he's like much more serious than everybody yeah. else. They're all making fun of him for it. I think that's kind of cool. Oh yeah, like so, like Zach Ward, like he was cracking me up, and then. Um, uh, yeah. I, I can't recall the actors. The guys that played Ed in English. Those the oh, banter Simon with those Phillips. two. Simon yeah. Phillips and, uh, Sean Kanan. Yeah. Yeah. Those those two going back and forth with each other was hilarious. I thought <laughs> too. So I was I was laughing at that. But yeah, and uh, not to give any spoilers, but but uh, one of one of the characters we we mentioned uh, dies at some point. <laughs> Death is very funny. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I would agree. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, one question. I'm, a, I, I'm one terrible question. at spoiling stuff, so I just have to keep my mouth shut when it comes to plot <laughs> stuff. So, yeah, one question I wanted quiet, to make sure yeah. I got in for you, James, was how fun is it as a director to blow up cars? Like, how Dude, fun um, so, so, so I will tell you this: that car blew up way bigger than I ever thought that car was going to fucking blow up. So I was just like, I was like, this is dumb. I was like, oh shit! Like that's it was like, like that. It looked massive, and it was fucking massive. Like it looked like a little like mini like nuclear explosion. I was like, oh fuck! Like I was like, damn, dude. I was all excited about it the whole time, and then I was like, I like held my breath. I was like, oh shit! Did like anybody get hurt? And then like everybody was like, okay. and I was like, all right, it was dope then. <laughs> Yeah, it's like that's got to be fun as hell just to blow up cars. So every film you want to put that in there, like we're gonna blow something up. Like we have to. Right? Dude, so. We got, we got. We, you know, making movies is one of the coolest jobs in the world because you get to live out like every fantasy. Like, oh, let me blow up this car. Let me see what it would be like if somebody jumped off of the top of a building. You know, it's like, <laughs> like ah, fuck it. You know, it's. I think it's 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 pretty legendary. That's awesome. John's gonna play the trailer. Scene. He's gonna play the trailer if that's alright with you guys. Oh you can... yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you I can give some trailer commentary right here. There's a trailer commentary. Oh, the trailer yeah. sold me on it. Yeah. Uh, share uh, audio, uh, sir. Share the audio. Yeah. God. Could I be yeah. quiet on the trailer? Or should I like, sh like, you know? No, you can talk over. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll give, I'll give like a little bit of trailer commentary here. 
Let yeah, me can call, call Matthew. hold on. I always get busted it's for this audio. every it's time because fine, you have sir. to. I'm gonna put it in the pot. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. They make you select share audio with the video. Like, come on now. Uh, all right, here we go. Um, I'm gonna play it right now. I've been chasing their boss forever. This might go south. If it might go south, I'm pretty sure it's going to go south. Hell of a day, isn't it, partner? Oh! Dude. Up here. Oh, it's lagging. Yo, go, go! Oh, yeah, come on. Why is that happening? Yeah, see, dude, Chad's just getting go, drunk go, and waking up. Don't you trust me, Come on, big boy. Come on, big boy. You got Zach Ward over there with the blonde hair you and the tattoos. Me to leave? Please, man. <laughs> Who are you? I'm a cop. These two just shot my partner down the road. Run! They're gonna lose gun. Don't worry, guys. You Bruce, get Bruce might be shot, These but he's throughout the whole movie. He's not just there. <laughs> this is my farm. Oh, oh man, I keep playing. That sucks. Who are these guys? They're drug dealers, scumbags. <laughs> I'm finishing this alone. That's actually one of my favorite fight scenes. That bar fight. Oh yeah, this that was is great. A development. Yeah, you came here to kill. Let's hammer the leg. Why not get the memo on that? Because evidently this cop did. Going around Rambo, different over there. Nothing like you. I got shot today. And I'm tied Bruce up. Bruce Adlin, this line is good. And you still hit like a bitch. That's not a share with my wife. That's actually the daughter. All right. Let's go and save him. This guy wanted to fight across the gun. We, we kill. Or be killed. I've noticed like all trailers have this like grid thing. I gotta finish this. Notice that, like, it's all like, under arrest. Wrong place, wrong time. I'm gonna be like a spark random. I'm not going anywhere. This is my farm. That's Joel right there. Uh, that was Joel's yeah, favorite totally, line, yeah, I think. That's me. Yeah, right. This is my farm. <laughs> my farm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 No, that. that. Really yeah, awesome. That was that was Chad's favorite line too. He was he, he he like knew it was his moment. He wanted people to be like, "Yo, like we wanted people leaving. Uh, we wanted people leaving the movie being like, this is my farm." Chad kept saying that to me, and I was like, "Ah, oh, I feel it." <laughs> we, we we got we got to to watch the, the film before it was released. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you got to this see it early, yeah. guys. Wow, this is fantastic. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, we get James. spoiled on this Thank show. We get spoiled. Yeah, you guys got to watch <laughs> yeah. it early. <laughs> Oh, my dad's my dad's gonna be jealous. Yeah, this is uh, right up his his wheelhouse. He's uh, hopefully you gotta watch it. You like it before it was released, <laughs> right? Yeah, I, I saw I, I saw uh, until the scene when he takes the the earpiece off, and then I say, "All right, I'm gonna finish finish this and I'm gonna watch it tonight when I when I'm done, and I'm gonna watch that definitely." But until that part. The only thing that, that make me a bit nervous was the fighting scenes. Fuck. You, 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 don't, you, you don't beat a girl. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> fight, scenes, fight scenes are pretty wild. Those girls kind of kick ass, man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, yeah. a different scenario. They're like Terminator style, yeah, you know? This is, like, this, this is like, yeah, this, yeah, this yeah. girl just does not stop. She's kind of beating the shit out of him, like, nonstop. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's, she had it's that, like, once... Like scissor, like takedown that she did, like some jujitsu move, and I was like, That's yeah. Cool. <laughs> like, yeah, and uh, yeah. also um, not to spoil, but with like uh, she did um, with the shotgun or something, put it between his legs and like took him down with the shotgun. I was like, that's badass. That's a good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the yeah. stunt team did an amazing job. These is like you know we want to do these like raid esque long long fights, and I think we did like the fights in this is like super long. Like you know yeah. they're, not, they're not like quick little fights. Like these are like really really like long fights. I think. Yeah. People will be surprised at how long like these fight sequences go in this movie. For sure. Yeah, because because sometimes when you have fighting scenes, there are so much camera moves, and that doesn't add at all because like you know that's just a camera moving. It's not people actually doing the the the, the fighting, and it, it it's a kind of a very fast paced dance that you have to rehearse a lot 
before. We yeah, we just to wanted to get there. To people. We wanted to get there in the madness, and there's like tons of breakaway stuff. So like stops breaking around them. They're slamming yeah. them on you know tables and through windows. And like I mean, there's a lot of crazy stuff there. We did a we 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 tried to really do it up. Yeah, um, I think um. You know, I like, see here I go again. I'm going to spoil. I, I'm just going to I want to talk about certain scenes and I'm like, I can't do that. Um, but <laughs> um, I wanted to um, ask uh, if you don't mind. Um, we wanted to shift. You. Actually, I don't know if you saw it. I, I bought your uh, comic book earlier today. <laughs> um, I would have given it to you for free. Uh, well, hey, <laughs> w- w- I mean, we're a comic company, so we're, we're doing yeah. our own comics. And uh, I'm like, oh, that's so cool. He's got his own comic. Um, Bam. Yeah. Um, full screener. There you go. What? So, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, are you obviously you're, you're crazy busy with the film stuff? Um, but is there any plans to continue? So going? my my goal was to so when I was younger, Sin City was like my shit. You know, mm. the movie Thank and you. the comics. So Thank like you. my, <laughs> you know, I have I have I have hundreds and hundreds of, of comics. I like I collect comics. I love comics. I used to go to Comic Con all the time, like every year, uh, when I was a kid. And so, uh, you know, I've I've tons of graphic novels. Um, I just wanted to release, uh, like maybe like ten comics, and then put them all together as one big graphic novel eventually. Um, yeah. And then hopefully pitch the uh, the whole thing as a TV series. But you know, my comic I realized right after making it, like I didn't know where to take a finished comic, so I just like, <laughs> had, like you know, five hundred copies printed myself, and I'm just selling through my Etsy because I was like, I like I don't really know where to, like who to take them to. It's like I guess Diamond or something. Uh, I'm friends with Glenn Danzig. Uh, I did two movies yes. with Glenn. I got Danzig I like, questions for you, so that's cool. yeah. I was gonna, I was like maybe like I asked Glenn like what to do with it, and he was like ah you can hit up like blah blah blah, and I was like I don't know, I don't know if I'm like I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. oh man, I feel like me me calling up like some random place, going like, look, I got this cool comic. Uh, yeah. I don't know if that works. So, so you know, well, if you guys want my comic on store shelves, ask people for the comic, and then and then they'll hit me up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, that's obviously we're we're less than a year old as a as a publishing company. Um, hey, you can publish. We, it. I'll give you my comic if you like it. You can publish it. It's, Hey, we can talk off the line. Yeah, good. Hey, yeah, I could give you. I could. We could. We could make that deal right now. We could do it. It'd be great. Yeah, we could talk yeah. offline. So like yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 we could do that. I, I, yeah, I know. I, I know. Uh, that, I'm up for that definitely. <laughs> yeah, I think Glenn. Glenn was making some comics too for a while, right? So he's got that in his background. And yeah, he's what, got Verotic, uh the Verotic comics, uh, and then he has um, like a lot of characters inside of that. Um, like so, like yeah. Pumpkill and Mortana and all these people. Yeah, I wanted, I wanted to, if it's okay with you, talk about Death Rider a little bit too on the sure, show. Sure, yeah, I can talk about Death Rider for sure. Nice, yeah, I haven't seen that yet, so I will say that. Um, but uh, I'm a huge uh, Danzig Misfits fan. I picture me in like '93 with my white boy dreadlocks, hanging out with Glenn on the bus, <laughs> like, <laughs> that kind of thing. So I guess um, one of the things I want to say is what. Um, uh, if you could you share like a because uh, uh, he always seems so serious like you know, he's on stage or performing um does he have a sense of humor and do you have a funny story <laughs> from working with him that oh, you could Glenn, share? Has great, Glenn has a great sense of humor Glenn, right. Glenn has you know, he seems so stoic and serious right? no I mean you know he's 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 stoic and serious he takes business seriously yeah. and, and you know he's a hard worker um and obviously he's built, built a following but I mean he, he has a great sense of humor he's 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 very funny. He can tell a lot of jokes. He's I mean he's he's a really good dude. Uh, and uh, actually, I'm supposed to have dinner with him in a couple of days. Uh, him and I keep keep uh, keep up and, and do dinner like you know maybe once every other week. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah he's a really good dude. Um, funny stories. Uh, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> oh, I have one funny story. One funny story is uh is uh Glenn was wearing his sunglasses during like some conversation with somebody and, uh, and like, you know, he was sitting there in the conversation and, and like the guy left, uh, and, uh, it was like a brief thing. And I was talking to Glenn and he like took off his sunglasses and he was talking to me and I was, and I was like, Glenn, it seems like you all only ever wear your sunglasses. Like when you're having a conversation with somebody you don't like. 
And then he he just put his sunglasses back on and looked at me. <laughs> I, was like, I, was like, I was like, I was like, wait, what does that mean? <laughs> like, it's not like me. I was like, ah, shit, no, but that's that's awesome. He's like, you know, but it's like funny moments like that. Like he does, he does, like I, like he didn't say that. Like I said it, and he just played on top of it. But it's just he's, awesome. You know, he's just he's just you know he's he's funny, but he's he's very nice. He's a nice dude. Did you grow up like a Misfits uh, Danzig fan too? Have you been to those? Dude, I, I straight up told Glenn like I am I am like a hundred percent like uh like a rock like not rock uh gangster rap like I grew up listening to like fucking you know <laughs> like Tupac Biggie DMX nice. like I nerded yeah. the fuck out of like when I met DMX like I was like oh shit I know all your songs I was like, just gonna I ask you actually, that yeah. I had actually <laughs> not like heard most of the Misfits stuff uh, I knew Mother. Like I knew that song and stuff, but I hadn't like, and I think that pi- par- probably like was part of why we got along so much. Cause like, I looked at him as like a director who had made music versus like um, a musician wanting to make movies and stuff. Cause I wasn't really like starstruck by the, uh, by, you know, I knew he had accomplished a lot, but like, I, you know, I've become a fan of their music in knowing him versus like prior to it, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like, cause I'm, I'm like, you know, if you look through the stuff I have in my house, it's like, you know, my, my, my record collection is like Kendrick Lamar. Or like, I'm like, I was like, you know, like Post Malone, like. <laughs> nice. That's awesome. Yeah, DMX oh, lived Post in New Malone. Hampshire for a while too. Like DMX was well, out here for a while too. So. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, X, X. Yeah. I did a few movies with X, and X actually has a couple tracks in Beyond the Law too. I mean, not in Beyond the Law, in um, in uh, Survive the Game. Yeah. Yep. In yep. the in the chase scenes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was like, what? What does it? What does a chase scene better than DMX going? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it fit. It fit. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man. I, you, you know, James. Like, I, you you have worked with one of our heroes. I mean, I, I'm I'm 51, and I I've seen all the the Bruce Willis uh, movies, even the series uh, in the 80s. I watched them all. Because I, I always thought that he was a great actor, and he, he seems to be a, a very easygoing person. I don't know. I just by uh, watching his interviews, and you were working with him. You know, it's like a you've no idea what he represents for my generation. Because like we we saw that in the cinema at the time it was out, and. You have accomplished something that most uh, most people in the industry would like to, and it, it's just awesome that you did it. But stating that, I want to ask you, which actor would be a replacement for him if you could not get Bruce Willis? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man, what a question. I don't know how to answer that. I mean, like, you know, this... It was such a Bruce Willis role, you know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. pretty much just talking shit to the guy, like the whole movie. Like Bruce Willis is literally like, if you want to see Bruce Willis just bad mouthing bad guys and talking shit to him, like that's what he does in this movie. Like, <laughs> it's just like talking so much shit to everybody. It's it's hilarious, and he keeps telling the guy like, you know, I'm gonna fucking kill you. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, you know, I, I I would say uh, no. It was such a Bruce. It was such a Bruce role, man. I I think Bruce is you know it, it was it's Bruce like you know and I grew up I grew up watching Bruce Willis movies too. I mean I'll tell you like I know again not to go back to Sin City, but like I watched that movie maybe like a hundred times. So like it's like Same it's here. pretty ridiculous. Like working with him, I was like, oh shit, it's the Sin City guy. Like, <laughs> you yeah. know, like obviously I people know him from many other movies and I've seen, yeah. you know, uh, all, all, most of his most famous movies, um, if not all of them. Uh, but you know, for me, Sin City was the one that like, you know, really stuck with me. Like, you know, he was, he was, he's, he's hard again, man. He's hard. Again. Uh, yeah. He was yeah. awesome. Yeah. Okay. That, that means that if he couldn't do it, uh, the film would, would not have been made. You and your challenging know. questions, man. Well, you could have just asked him. You could have asked him, like, who's on your bucket list of people Yay! to work with? <laughs> yeah, I forgot to tell him that. Uh, you, you, you don't have to answer that. Don't make me offend, Bruce. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. I, I, know, I know the feeling because uh, no, no, no actor won't be, uh, you know, the second, uh, I would say, the second option. You know? I mean, the weird thing is, is, like, it's really impossible for me to, like, picture – 
anybody in any role of my movies once I've spent like a year looking at them in that role. You know what I mean? Because yeah. like we've spent all the time like editing, like all this stuff. It's like they're that person, you know, uh, to me. So it's it's hard to imagine it. Like it might have been a different conversation if you would ask me before I'd spent like so much time looking at them as the person. Um, yeah. But but it's it's hard to imagine anybody as a different you know character uh in that hey did you guys catch my cameo in the movie speaking of uh of actors the we- that- weatherman yeah oh, man. <laughs> guess, yeah the weatherman i was the weatherman the weatherman and the opening thing is the weatherman dude do you uh, i i haven't known have you um had cameos in all your movies that uh, i've or... had cameos in all of my movies except hate crime okay um, yeah just because like that movie had like you know like seven characters and uh, it would have not made sense for me to be one of those seven. <laughs> <Right. Yeah. laughs> um, so that's the only one that I don't have a cameo in. That's cool. Yeah. What's um, um What's your feeling when they come out? Like you know how there's like the director's cut and you get the final product. Do you feel like uh, some of you gets left on the cutting room floor, so to speak? Or what's that experience like for you as a director? Um, I guess you know other scenes that like oh you're like oh man you kill me that that can't get in or what, what's that experience like going through that process to see some of the thing get cut down? Uh, thankfully that's only happened to me once. Um, and, oh, nice. uh, you know, in a lot of movies, it's only happened to me once. And, uh, and, um, that one time that it happened, I mean, I still to this day think that my first, like my cut of the movie was better. Uh, Actually it is the director's cut. Yeah. 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 But that yeah. didn't happen with this movie. Like this movie is, is what I, you know, what I, what I intended um nice. but but there is one movie that i did and i won't say which one that the cut was uh like kind of taken away from me early on in my career and uh and and i think the movie doesn't really make sense now and i got like like hit up the the, the hard part was i got hit up in the reviews like ah the movie doesn't make sense the movie doesn't make sense and uh and and I was like, yeah, but it did when I cut it. Like, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, yeah. different oh. thing. It doesn't make sense that I don't know what it is because they like recut and reordered scenes in the movie. Like, so like there was like, oh the, man. And that again, that is not this movie. This is a movie that I made like you know like uh, going on like eight years ago that I'm talking about. But you know, yeah, yeah. that's uh, I yeah, that, that's you awesome. know they, they let you run with it. That's great. Yeah, yeah. This one, this one, I'm really happy with it and. Uh, Lionsgate was was great to work with, and uh, and EFL was great to work with. Um, you know, they really kind of let me do my thing here, which uh, I really appreciate. Uh, you know, they, we we tried to make something fun and weird and crazy, and I think you know we actually got to do that with this movie, which I think is rare for these types of action movies to be able to kind of yes. go as like unchained because really all of them follow the same formula a lot of the time. Because I watch the stuff online all the time, like you know on on on. Um, uh, 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 like Netflix and, and Tubi and all that stuff. And a lot of them just follow the same form- formula. Uh, but we, you know, we lucked out being able to do our thing on this one. Yeah. We want, Great. you know, the director's vision of the movie, right? Not something that's homogenized and put into, Oh, we got to fit into 90 minutes or we got to fit into two hours. Well, who cares if it goes two hours and 14 minutes, like good, we got the director's, you know, feel yeah. vision. Cause yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm, I'm happy with this one. I feel like it's a fast paced, fun thrill ride. And, and I think people are going to dig it uh, as long as they don't take it too seriously. Um, you know, that's like I think like if they if they understand what they're going in to see, I think people will have a lot of fun with it. I agree to that. I I um I grew up wanting to make movies. I, I used to write uh, scripts when I was in school. I took film classes and uh, we made some pretty shitty horror movies. Um, but uh, uh, horror movies are awesome, man. Oh, <laughs> I would go back and watch them now. We'd probably get canceled um <laughs> but uh but um for for any aspiring um filmmakers out there um what what advice can you give them you know people that are just starting out um that that want to yeah, do this yeah, go out and make your movie like you know you don't have a budget then make something that you can make for no money like you know i made my first i made my not my first my like third feature for 500 bucks and shot it on an iphone you know what i mean and you know you got you got like other movies like the now they're the new the new iphone looks like it's actually like legitimately like made to make movies apparently um so like you know like that's that that should have way more people making stuff like go out there get your friends together shoot something you want to make stuff do it just do it like don't talk about it do it you want to make it do it 
You know, like I wanted to make a comic book. I found an artist and made a comic book. You know, I just did it. You know, like yeah. you just got to do it. Like you want to do something. It's like, you know, it's, 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 I know like there's a lot of nerves about stuff like this, but I always like to relate things back to food because I feel like food is like the one thing that like everybody completely understands. So like, you know, you don't stand in the kitchen and go like, oh man, I really want a sandwich. I got these ingredients to make a sandwich, but I don't know if I can make this sandwich. <laughs> Like you just fucking make the sandwich and then you eat the sandwich and then maybe you go, Hey, it wasn't that good of a sandwich, but like at least I ate it and I'll move on. And next time I get hungry, I'll make a better sandwich. You know what <laughs> I mean? Like go out there and make your sandwich. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's All right. Good. James, James, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, I love bothering people. But <laughs> You're not bothering me at all, man. Don't worry. Yeah. But, but I will bother you now because that analogy wouldn't work. Uh, when it comes to producing art or producing films, because if you do a shitty sandwich, you're gonna, you're not gonna be hungry, you know, you wake that. But if you do a shitty movie and you have people investing in new companies, you're over, man. You know, like if you just don't make it and you've spent loads of money, you, you're out, you know. And sometimes I think. You know, that approach would really work for everyone. I don't know, because that depends you know, on how much, I, how much you can take from life. I how understand. You, I understand. How, how many punches can, can, you, can you take and, and get on your feet again and keep on doing it? Because that's hard, you know. I understand what you're saying. And, uh, you know, this actually kind of goes back to, uh, to, you know, something that like really resonated with me when I was, you know, first getting started. I, you know, I had, I had the, uh, the blessing of working with, um, with, uh, with Wes Craven. Um, I was on a, the, the, we were doing a, a, a reality show that ended up not airing, but it was called Fright Masters. It was kind of like the horror version of uh, Project Greenlight. And Wes was the judge and, and I got to know him, was talking with him. And he said to me, the people that make it in this business are the ones that just don't give up. And, and, and I think that's, that's really what, what it boils down to. Like this yeah. business is about persevering, like don't give up. Like, you know, you don't have to, like, I feel like, you know, maybe it's hard to follow the same path that I did and I, everybody has their own path, you know, but I feel like if you don't give up um, and you keep trying new things, like, you know, it can, it can become, uh, you know, more, uh, you know, and, and a perfect, a perfect thing is like, I'll tell you a story about DMX. When I first met DMX first day, you know, I, I'm meeting him. I go to meet him and DMX goes, what do you want to do with your life? And I go, well, X, I, I think I'm, I think I'm doing it, man. I'm making movies. <laughs> he goes, no, 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 no. What do you want to do with your career? And I was like, uh, like I want to make like Marvel movies, like big, big movies. He goes, nah, man, who do you want to be? And I go, well, X, like, I want to be the next Robert Rodriguez or, like, Quentin Tarantino or, or, or you know, Steven Spielberg. And he goes, that's beautiful, dog, but how about you just be the first you? <laughs> so, I mean, like, Truth Bomb dropped by DMX the first time I meet him. And, like, Truth awesome. Bomb drops here. Like, just be the first you. Like, you paint your path. Like, believe yeah. in yourself. Like, the person that has to believe in you the most is you. You believe yeah. in you and you keep pushing and you keep believing in you and keep going and you don't give up, you know, like you don't need a, a bazillion, like, you know, you don't need a bunch of money to paint a picture. You can paint yeah. that picture. And then, you know, if you sell it, you, you know, great. But like continue, like art is meant to be made, you know, make your art, tell your story, make your thing and keep building, build up, just make it like fail a little better each time. Like I said, like I'm just failing upwards. I'm just trying to fail better. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I agree with you. I, 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 I agree, agree though. though. I, I, feel I, like, I feel like, oh man, oh, you guys hear that echo now? Are you guys hearing me echo? No, I'm not hearing you. All right, good. All right, that was weird. Sorry, I had a, like an echo of my own voice. Um, as I say, I agree with you, James. Um, I think the disconnect with you, Rogerio, in this is, you know, he's not saying, you know, go make a feature film, like, and not know what the fuck, fuck you're doing, right? Like, learn, get better, go out there and do it, you know? Um, you're not going to, if you wait until you're perfect, you're never going to do it, you know, at, at the yeah, end of the day. Short, so. Make a short film for 30 yeah. bucks on your phone with some friends, yeah. you know? Like, yeah. do stuff, you know, make stuff, you know? Yeah. Like, you know, it's, it's how, how do you, how do you learn to paint a really good painting? You draw a bunch of pictures first. Yeah. You paint a bunch of really yeah. shitty paintings. You don't you don't just paint the Sistine Chapel on your first try. You know? <laughs> right, right. Right. 
Yeah, yeah for every yeah, that... good painting, there's. I, I'm a painter too. That was my background. There's there's 90 others that people don't see that I'm not sharing online. Right? They think of us hitting the ball out of the park every single time I put a painting up. It's like, no man, there's a dumpster full of shit in my backyard here. You know that. <laughs> yeah, that's the cut, you know? yeah, that happens. That's real. Yeah. You know. Yeah. yeah. See, I just I just put them all. I put all my stuff. We <laughs> <laughs> start doing that. I'm just moves. like, fuck it. All of it goes yeah. out. Yeah. <laughs> So one thing, James, um, I've been kind of pontificating this maybe as like the future of how to film, right? And you have like this technology now where you can put like the, the 360 panoramic type of images on like Facebook and social media. Do you see the technology in the film industry going into something more where there might be like an augmented reality? Yeah, there's like AR and VR based stuff for sure. Yes. Like I feel yeah. like that wouldn't be like filmmaking. It'd be like something else. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like movies are going to stay in the same movie format. Like, it's going to be something else. I don't think what you're saying is not going to exist. I think that will exist and people will do it. And there might be narrative stories told that way. I just wouldn't look at them as films, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah, I'm not going to be like a purist of, 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 of film, but like, you know, like, I, you know, I was really shocked when, like, I think it was like Netflix or one of those places was like, hey, we're introducing a thing where you can watch your movies faster. We'll just you just press this button and it's uh it's one point oh, wow. five and it'll play it at like one point five speed. I'm like, that's fucking frightening. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, that's like, terrible. Hey, now you need to watch your movies in four minutes. You know? Yeah. They're also yeah. doing the that choose your own adventures. Time. Yeah. You just download it to your brain and you can decide whether you liked it. All right, all right. Um we'll Netflix decide. is <laughs> they're you know, they're doing the choose your own adventure movies too, right? Like and um, I think those are dope though. Like I think choose your own adventure is like kind of a really cool way to do it because I think like, imagine this, like you're in a movie theater, right? Go back to movie theaters. I know it's COVID and stuff, but like the idea of like years from now, we're all in movie theaters. Every theater's got like, you got like your chair with a button on it. You know what I mean? And like, that's pretty we're, cool, all, we're all sitting there and we get to like this point where like there's a thing and everybody in the theater like gets to choose between like three buttons. You all press it, right? And then, like, whatever has the most button pushes is, like, where the like story Like, every time you watch the movie, it'd be different. It'd be, like, a vote button. Like, that'd be pretty cool. Yeah. I like where your head's at. That's actually a pretty, pretty, uh, pretty cool idea. Yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I think that interactive, immersive experience is coming to a degree, right? There may still be the traditional yeah. film. And uh, I think in, you know, if you're in, like, a horror situation, you could, if you're in that setting you could look up and like you see the monster like on the ceiling but like the main characters can't see him and it's out of frame and that could be an interesting type of genre or, or style to make a film but i could definitely see it coming like to your point you know that could oh be yeah i mean you know yeah. they kind of played with stuff like that before like you know what was it the original 13 ghosts like you'd wear the glasses and yes. you could see the ghosts but you couldn't or like you know like the tingler like in the theater they'd like have the seats rigged to like shock you like a little <laughs> bit when i was going through the theater like, you know, it's like, I think like, you know, immersive stuff is fun, man. Like there's like, I, I think, you know, I don't know if you've gone to like one of those 4D theaters, but you go see like a movie in 4D and like the, the chairs like kind of like moving and stuff. You're like, oh snap, like that works really well for like a Fast and the Furious type movie. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Like um, universal kind of deal, right? So, yeah, yeah, pretty much. Uh, simulation yeah. rides, man. Those were like my thing as a kid. I used to love simulation rides. Oh, for so. sure. For sure. Yeah. Um, I, I was going to ask, um, when you, when you decided to write a comic book, um, because you were obviously, you were already doing movie scripts, was the transition pretty, pretty seamless? Um, go, you know, movie it, was script, a little comic seamless. it was a little seamless. My girlfriend at the time kind of showed me how, like she had done a comic before and she kind of showed me like the format and like how to do it. And then, so like, I kind of followed that. You know, so it, it was it was pretty, um, you know, it was pretty cool. And uh, it was, you know, I did it inside of COVID because I was like locked in the house during the lockdown. And I was like, yeah. you know, I can't go make a movie. Like it was like either that I was either going to make a comic or my entire movie was going to star my cat. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> it was, so, like, yeah, blockbuster. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Blockbuster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, my entire Instagram and Twitter pretty much stars my cat. So it's yeah, like, it does. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, I see you all the time. <laughs> Uh, yeah. no, I mean, we were our our company was formed during COVID. It's just uh, you know, if there's any silver lining to come out of this whole thing, I think a lot of creatives um, are finding their their places. You know, where yeah. we have more time, where you know, like Rosario's in Brazil. He's an artist on one of our comic books, and we would have never met him if it wasn't for COVID, because we wouldn't be doing all these uh, computer conversations with people on zoom and, and yeah. Streamyard and all that yeah, so crazy is that how like interconnected everybody could be around the world like especially yeah. 
time like this like you know it's wild it's 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 beautiful like it's kind of you know there's a lot of things that i don't like about the internet but this is like you know kind of one of the cool things about the internet sure yeah yeah i was gonna ask um, uh, uh, what type of uh, challenges did you find during this period of like trying to be a filmmaker was um survived the game something you had had in the can and then this broke out or, or no we what filmed did that look in like? covid we filmed in covid so like you oh, know nice. but there, was, there was challenges of making the movie inside of covid like you know we had to like you know keep distance i was wearing a mask the whole time you know uh we had testing every two days where you had like the deep nose thing it like went all the way into my nose oh man like, bubble so like i'm in puerto rico filming this movie i wasn't going out on my days off like i'm like you know like <laughs> stuck in my hotel room or like uh, like everybody's like how was it being in puerto rico for a few months and i was like well all i saw was my hotel room and set um <laughs> <laughs> and like <laughs> so it's like uh yeah and then i saw like the the the, the restaurant at the hotel like it's like you know <laughs> like, yeah. I was like, like i was like ah. like what what, 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 what I didn't like experience like anything. So it's like, you know, it's, um, but it was, it, it was, you know, I, I was very blessed to be able to have the opportunity and, and, you know, it's amazing that, you know, art still persevered in, in a time like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, James, uh, here in Brazil, we have since the, the sixties, uh, soap operas now, now they're called novellas. Yeah. Amazing. And it seems to be, uh, it is, it, it doesn't seem to be, it is a big hit. And all the series on streaming companies such as Netflix, Amazon, Disney. And have you ever thought of uh, directing or maybe producing some, some series? Uh, because it seems to be, a, 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 I don't know if it's a level up uh, movies or it is something that is I don't know, man. Look at those it, Netflix budgets. They spend a lot of money on those TV shows, man. I'd love yeah, to make a TV show. TV would, would, you like to, would you like to make some? Yeah, I would love to. I would love to. I mean, I, you know, it's funny because, like, as a as a filmmaker, I would love to. As like a, as as a consumer, like, I don't really like TV as much because, like, I like getting my whole story all at once. You know, so like yeah. when I watch TV, like, you know, like a perfect example, when I watched Breaking Bad and like I got a Breaking Bad tattoo on me, like I'm a huge fan of Breaking nice. Bad. When I watched oh, Breaking yeah. Bad, I watched all of it, I binged all of it in two days because like I want my whole story. So like I literally like did nothing. Like I didn't sleep. I was just like all I did because I was like, well, what happens next? Like I don't like oh, cliffhanger. I want to know what happens. So it's oh. like. That's why I like the movies. I get my whole story in like two hours. Like it's like, okay, I get my two hour story. It's great. Yeah, yeah. So, so you, you would rather keep keep on doing uh, movies? Instead. No, I'd like to make TV. I'm just saying, <laughs> as a, as the person who watches stuff, I don't really like to watch TV. Yeah, because it seems to to be some advantage to uh, character building. And yeah, yeah, it would be more fun to be able to like stretch it out longer and do that. I just personally wouldn't like watch that as much, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know if you've seen uh, Fargo. Oh, um, we lost with us, Joe. Oh, he'll be back. He 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 has connection pops out and then he comes back in. It's so strange with this side of things. I did but, yeah. I did see Fargo the 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 um the movie. The movie right? and, Fargo, the, the TV. and this the series, have you seen it? I have not. Oh, the series is fantastic. You gotta see it. Because there are some some things in the movie uh, and and you find some gaps, and those gaps are all cleared up on the series. And oh, so it ties into the movie? It, it does, it does, yeah. Oh, wow. But you have to watch it, 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 the whole thing, you know, like, a, I would say like, it would take you a day and a half. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll, I'll probably yeah. check it out. What's it on? Yeah. It's on uh, FX, I think it was, I'm yeah. Be on, like, Hulu? Oh, hmm, yeah, if 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 you have, um, I think it's on Hulu, I don't know. Um, but I, I was going to say, um, with Breaking Bad, we, my wife and I binged it, but there was the final season still. So like we binged all the way to the final yeah, season, and then we had to wait week to week for the last season. It was uh, awful. No, I, don't yeah. like yeah. I don't like waiting that week to week stuff, man. No, no way. Like that's an outdated model. We don't need that anymore. Yeah, um, I, I know we we had uh, mentioned up front. Um, I, I think we were. Um, we had an hour for you. Um, I don't know how you're doing with time, but. Um, uh, I, you know, didn't know if you want to um, say anything about the movie uh, before you get a bounce or. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I definitely, um, you know, I, I survive the game comes out in, in limited theaters October 
8th, and then on the 12th, it'll hit VOD and DVD and Blu-ray, uh, everywhere you can rent movies uh, or buy movies. Um, and, uh, and yeah, um, I'm, I'm really excited for people to see this one. I hope everybody likes it. Um, thank you guys so much for having me on uh, and, and taking the time to chat with me and taking the time to watch the movie. Um, and, yeah, anything, anything you guys want to ask me before I jump off, I'm more than happy to, to, to answer. Uh, I've had a lot of fun here. Yeah. yeah. We, uh, first of all, we thank you for being here. And uh, my last question for you is that you, you, you're a 20, 29 year old man. You know, like uh, you can make so many things from now on. Have you ever envisioned your future? Like uh, what you'd be doing in 20 years from now? Shit, man. Um, <laughs> hopefully, still making stuff. <laughs> hopefully, still making stuff, man. I, you know, I. I I just, I just keep my head down and I just keep working, um, you know, and, and, you know, I, I, I've set goals that are pretty lofty. Uh, I don't know if I'll make those goals in the time that, uh, you know, you've talked about. Um, but, you know, hopefully before I die, I do. Uh, but hopefully I'm still just, you know, making stuff, you know, that's just, that's just where I'm at. And, you know, I'm, I've been very, very blessed to have the opportunities I've been given and to work with such amazing people like Bruce Willis, Shannon Doherty, like, you know, uh, Zach Ward, like all, you know, Chad Michael Murray, all the amazing people that I've worked with uh, in my career uh, that have believed in me, DMX, you know, all these people. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very fortunate to have uh, had that uh, opportunity. And, um, you know, my, my dad believed in me. He passed away two years ago. And, uh, and you know, I, I hope that I'm able to uh, live up to his hopes and his expectations for me as well. And, uh, you know, I just, I just, you know, keep, keep working and, and hopefully, you know, uh, I attain what I'm trying to do. I mean, that's just ultimately, you know, uh, hopefully at some point I'm going to be like, look, I, uh, I'm not failing upwards anymore. I'm, 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 I've, I've, I've done it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I did yeah, an that's, okay job. <laughs> yeah, that's, 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 that's great. That's great. I, yeah. I, I'm sure your, your dad will be really proud. Yeah. yeah. With the amount of work you're putting out, James, I don't know how you could fail. Yeah. Right. I always say, uh, <laughs> You know, fame is an opinion, but being prolific is a fact, right? Don't take that away from you. Like, hey, man, I put out 300 movies. Like, damn, that's a lot of films. <laughs> I'm trying to be, I'm trying to be the American Takashi Miike. You know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> trying to be, trying to be the American dude. I'm like, man, trying to, trying to do it, trying to, trying to do it. Like, uh, you know, so hopefully, uh, hopefully, you know, we, we, we just keep. We keep making stuff, man. That's you know, and I, I'm I'm very blessed that you know people like you guys take the time to talk with me. Yeah, well, yeah. again, we appreciate it. Um, yeah. I was excited when you agreed to come on, and uh, so, um, yeah. Well, if you want to hang, we we uh, always chat after for a few minutes, but uh, um, all right. Well, yeah. I'll let, I'll let you guys go. I got to feed. That's why Martin keeps coming up. He's trying to. Get <laughs> He's hungry. <laughs> but thank you guys so much. You guys rock. Uh, Awesome. Live the comments. Let's go. Thank All you, right. James. Yeah, thanks. Thank you very Bye, much. Thanks, James. We're, <laughs> we'll be back tomorrow night with Josh Marcella, a horror author. So we're doing uh, the marathon here. So I uh, hope everyone out there continues to stay livid, and we'll catch you tomorrow night.